from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Once you start racing, you'll start to know that the more information your driver can have, the better. One of the things that we've found is that the Sentinel system allows you to be able to not only get your driver the information that they need, but also be able to share the information with the pit and anybody who's got internet availability. You can integrate your aim data. You can integrate the driver tag, as in who is the driver in the car. You can also integrate in your standings and who is ahead or behind of you into the dash, as well as be able to see flag statuses in case there's a yellow flag or a red flag or a black flag. Hopefully none of those, but uh, they do happen. This was developed by a fellow racer, former guest, James Candelaria, and uh, he is uh, seeing a lot of people using it in the SCCA, WRL, AER, and we are doing demos at our paddocks whenever we are at the track. It could be at a race or it could be at an HBD. If you're interested and want to come in and see how it is, we can give you a demo. And if you find that it's something that would be helpful to your racing, please use our discount code, which will save you 10% on anything that you buy. And it is uh, creatively GHIT, G-H-I-T for Garage Heroes and Training. So hopefully you will find that the uh, Sentinel system is as useful for your racing as we have found it for ours. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. You're ready to move up. Dominating with Dawson. Dominating with Dawson. Dominating with Dawson. Dominating with Dawson. Is Vicky here? I'm here. She is. Oh, cool. Is Ben here? Yeah, I'm here, guys. Oh boy. What's up? What do we? What do we got? What do we got? All right, so I've got, I've got a question, and it uh, it came in from a listener. Oh yes! All right. So I'm, so I'm there was down. there was a uh, a discussion about mm. coasting. Mm, and I think, and, and I understand, but mm-hmm. perhaps I think so, some of the discussion was related to what the definition of coasting was, and whether or not it's, it's okay on track. So there was two two potential Ooh. definitions. Okay. Okay. One was it was time when you were not on the throttle or the gas pedal or the brake. That would be kind of the strict definition of coasting. Uh-huh. Okay. And then the other was it was time with no inputs of either throttle, brake, or steering. Right? Uh, I mean, isn't that the same thing as the other one? Just we just also specify that you're not steering anywhere. Yes, you could coast. You could be coasting while you steer. I think. Yes, you could. But sometimes you could be at a, a maintenance, like in a big long carousel turn. You could be at a maintenance uh, speed with a constant steering angle. Is that technically coasting? But, but you're also you're also giving it a maintenance throttle, right? Yes, you're going some some throttles. So I would say I, I would say if you're on throttle or brake, you're not coasting. Okay. You know, even if you're maintaining a steady rate, which sometimes you have to do very rarely, in my, in my opinion. But like, yeah, <laughs> we have a we have a cat interruption, a certain cat part butt. of the cat. But yes, cat butt alert. Cat butt. <laughs> oh, I just got a good look at the entire thing. Thanks, okay. Jake. Once again, <laughs> glad it's not a video podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Wait, 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 wait. Since you did that to me, since you showed me full cat butt, let me just remind you where that butt goes. Do you have a toothbrush? Do you have a toothbrush in your house? Is it out on the counter? Nope. Oh, that's smart. That's smart because that cat butt goes everywhere you go all the time, whether you're looking or not. 
that cat butt touches surfaces you eat off of. But I mean, it looked pretty clean, so that's a good thing. Anyway, so so we have a black and white cat named Luna Fluffy Butt. (laughs) (laughs) She who is put your she puts her butt on your pillow where you sleep with your face. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All those cat butts go across every area that you love to put your stuff on. And and thank you so much for showing me that cat butt. Oh my god! But I don't even know what we were talking about. I completely have no idea what this one is about. What were you discussing now? Well, coasting, coasting, coasting. Yeah, yes. I'll tell you one thing. One thing you can't coast through is just getting a whole view of a cat ass. That's the <laughs> co- that's what the brakes. The brakes are like. So, so that so this is this is obviously going to be part one of many for coasting, but because <laughs> Vicky's totally <laughs> shot the entire episode, but that's fine. That's fine. No, no, no. People, people, let's let's go to let's get to coasting. I'm sorry, that cat butt okay. really threw me off. <laughs> cut, cut, cut the cat butt. Cut, cut it, cut it, cut the cat butt. That's fine. Uh, I, I glad you think that my uh, editing skills are high enough to cut out this, but I don't think I can. Oh, listen, um, he's not going to cut this out for anything. Vicky, do you do you do you ever coast on track? Oh God, you yes. used to you used to, you used to like to let off the gas uh, and I, 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 ride I until really, you decided to start breaking. I really am trying not to. Good, uh, good. It's one of my conscious efforts mm-hmm. right now. Your conscious effort is not to do nothing. Is trying not to coast. <laughs> be active. Be doing something, right? Be, yeah, be making I, yeah, something. I, I, but... but but the thing is, is that it's not muscle memory. Yeah, so it's, it's tough I, to break I, the street driving habits. Uh, so, yeah, that that I think that is the the worst struggle that I have right now is trying not to coast. Yeah, I mean, need more de time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She does. And the str- and the struggle is is every time I keep trying to push it, I I end up entering into self preservation mode. So yeah, um, gotcha. Push yeah. you push too far and then back. You push too far, scare yourself well, a little bit, and then back too far uh, off. Is I, that what you mean? Well, no, I I need to have an instructor in the car with me at this point. Because, who's not named Bill? Who's not named Bill? Um, yeah, so, I, I I I'm dying to get in the car with you and Jen and Bill. Even though Bill's a Bill's a fully realized uh, driver, I want to I want to get in the car with all of you and just drive the car in my mouth and be yelling, "Go go 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 go!" I think it'll be well. So the fun. thing is, is like I don't know whether I should be downshifting instead right. of like when you don't coast, you're just is it like you go from like a hundred and then you just break? Is that what you do? Yeah, you're a hundred yeah, so, and then so you're, break. You're, you're, you're at the end of the straightaway in fifth gear, going 100. There goes the episode again. Sorry, guys. More more cat stuff, but we're going to push right through it. It's, uh, <laughs> this, it looked like it smelled pretty bad, though. Um, <laughs> there's a cat dead. on the, That's a dog. That's a dead dog. That dog is retired. Oh, it just moved. I thought that thing was deceased. Jesus Christ. Um, she's, anyway. ve- she's very relaxed. <laughs> so, so anyway. So, um... so relaxed it was so still. But you're asking. You're saying, hey. If I'm going 100, what do I do between 100 and the 30? I need to be going to turn into this tight tight corner, right? You need to lose mm-hmm. speed yeah, that, to that's, turn into. So, yeah, so we that's that's my issue. That. We definitely talk about that sometimes. So so by the time you you want to go from 100 to start slowing, you, you need to be ready to take your foot off the throttle pedal right onto the brake pedal. So mm-hmm. you want to be stopping at the last possible second to safely stop. So that that doesn't involve any waiting or kind of rolling out of the throttle and to gradually get over the brake. We're talking about off the throttle, right to the brake. The last safe moment you can do it and still get turned into the corner and, and make your apex like you want to. Like, you know, if you, if you wait, a, you know, half a mark or too late to brake, what's likely to happen is not that you're going to go necessarily crash your car. You're probably just going to have an ugly. Well, not most your, likely it, crash your car. <laughs> I said not we likely. Could, you're not, I'm saying you're, you're not, it's not likely that, that a small braking error too deep is necessarily going to throw you off the track. What's likely to happen is you're going to have an ugly corner where you don't make your apex and you end up you know, exiting in a weird spot. And you're way out to the edge of the track on the exit. And you totally toss that lap in the trash. But, but so that's what I'm saying. Is you, is you want to wait till the last possible second, and you have to work your way up to find that. At different, oh, different it's hard. Different that, tracks. It's but, hard. But the, but the idea is the, the idea is you're not coasting. You're jumping straight from full acceleration, full chat at the end of the straightaway, to right on your brakes at the last second that you can to still get turned in. So that's the kind of the big skill set that you have to build is like knowing the timing, knowing you know what visual references you have. They're going to tell you when it's time to jump on the brakes. So right. it's uh, it's hard. That's one of the things that the VE brings you is, is just getting a better mechanical sense that time you hear it in different places so ben since we're talking about coasting and we've blown this whole topic now 
how would you go about doing that? Let's suppose you're coming up, you're on a straightaway, you're coming to right. a turn, it's right or left, it doesn't really matter. It's got boards, gotcha. five, four, three, two, sure. one, boom, boom, boom. Yep. You're uncomfortable with doing what we just talked about. I'm Vicky's uncomfortable. Un- Vicky's uncomfortable with it. So what would you, sitting in the right seat, ask her to yeah. do? Yeah, so so we we would uh we'd be right along and I would say, Hey, coming into this corner at the end of the straightaway, and I'll be telling you it's fucked like at the beginning of the straightaway, not not the second you have to think about it, but I want to be talking to you about it while you you know, while we're getting going down the straightaway. Say, hey, the end of the straightaway, let's try breaking at three. I'm gonna let you know when to break. And I'll I'll give a hand signal. We, before we even get going, I'll tell people what my hand signals are for breaking and getting on the mm-hmm. gas. That's pretty much all I use is, is hand signals and talking. Um, two hand signals and talking, pretty much. And I'll I'll kind of guide. I'll kind of show people what I want the wheel to be doing with my hands. Mm-hmm. I'll kind of hold. I'll kind of hold the steering wheel a little bit in their field of vision if I don't like what they're doing. I'll, I'll kind of correct them and show them what I, I think their wheel needs to be doing. But I don't do that all the time. Um, the main things I do are just telling people exactly when to break exactly when to get back on the gas so i'll i'll pat the dashboard for when i want you to break if you're not doing it enough i'll start slapping it like that hopefully people can hear that but you know what i mean i've I'm, I'm pretty much got two modes I'm, I'm telling people when to break and telling people now is when you can get back on the throttle because that's what most people don't know most people can figure out the braking but, but the thing that holds most drivers back is when can i fully commit to getting back on the gas and usually i'm like go 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 like no way i'm like yes hit it hit it hit it that's my big thing when i'm instructing is, is on the exits i'm like hit it let's go let's go but on the way in what we're doing at the end of the straightaway, is we're on the way in. You're going 100 miles an hour. I'm going to say let's break it to three, and, and and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to set it one marker back from where I, where I know they actually need to break in that car. I'm going to start breaking pretty far back, not going way deep. I'm not going to take you take a, a a student way deep. I'm going to start before I know they really need to, and then if, if we end up slowing down too much for the course, I'm going to say break hard, break hard, give me all the brakes right now. I don't care about the downshift, especially if it's a novice student. I just care about the slowing. I'm like give me all the brakes right now right here and if we park you know way before turning and have to drive up to the turn in i just know the next time i'm going to tell them hey let's try it at the two and a half and so i'll just work i'll keep working them way up to, to to a breaking point that their skill in their car their skill level in their car can handle at the time so you know i'll start pretty conservative on the first lap and kind of see what they can do but i'm talking to you i'm saying like all right hard breaking down if it's if it's somebody who i've seen can do down just i'll be like all right grab fourth grab third for your turn in so i'll I'll talk them through i'll talk them through the the downshift too but usually at the very basic level when you're i'm in the car i'm just mainly trying to govern them braking and find where their their beginning of braking and their end of braking needs to be so sometimes that's a that's a movable zone and and also you know if i've been in the car all weekend with somebody and they start out at a relatively novice rate but they're learning pretty quick you know our brake zone moves up And, and i'll have to say yeah we got onto the straightaway quicker so, you know, we might have to break a little bit earlier, or I've seen that you can break a little bit deeper. You know, we're maintaining pretty much the same speed down the straightaway, but I see that you and your car or, you know, can handle breaking a little bit deeper. We'll push it up in there. But I'm talking the whole time to them, like, all right, you know, we want to, when we get down here, I want to try breaking here. I'm just going to try to set a goal for them and then help them achieve it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So would you be concerned with, let's say it's a, a fifth gear turn? going in it's third coming out would you be concerned if they did five four three or would you care if they did five to three it's their Shift. car it's their okay. car i don't care I, i'm way less concerned with the mechanics of the downshifting i mean to me you know if you look at your nasa uh, hpde passport you know, one of the things that like i think rev matching is is pretty far down the intermediate scale. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The stuff with the mechanics of shifting is pretty far down the intermediate scale to the point where you may not be where you haven't instructed the car unless you just get a check ride for moving up or something like that. But uh, for the most part, uh, at the novice and early intermediate level where I'm likely to be in a car with somebody, I, I don't I, like, I'll tell them if they, if they bork the shift, you know, if it's, if it's not where it needed to be, I might tell them on the way out, but I'm not trying to go, all right, downshift but i'm really talking about the downshifts unless i see something that was a mess and then i'll try to pick a calm spot on track say hey you know when we go through the section again the, the, you know i'll reference the section and i'm gonna say let's try let's try in third gear or let's try to get you know let's try to get into third gear before here you know what i mean i'll, I'll tune them mm-hmm. up on their shifting at a quiet at a quiet leisurely spot on track like you know where, where we can talk and i think they can absorb it um i i it's just not my style to like really try to be talking to people about shifting as it's happened uh, as it's happening unless, unless it happens to be somebody who i who so, some folks react very quickly to your your voice. So you can say, do it, do it, do it. And someone's like, bam, bam, bam. 
other folks hear and absorb at a different rate. So that's another that's thing to do with instructing. So that's another thing I, I think is important for an instructor is like, how quickly is this person absorbing and reacting to what I'm saying? And if it's not immediate, that's not a problem. We just figure out, okay, I got to kind of tell this person in, in a quiet spot or even I, I'm the worst about doing a real quality debrief with a student because I'm, I'm just a shitty instructor that way. Like, come on, it's like, all right, I got to get out of here. I got to go do this, you know, my other student or test my race car. But, but you know, you know, if you have time for a debrief and you can sit down and say, all right, you know, when we were doing good with this, this, and this, but the shifting needs to be this and this, you know what I mean? That, that's another good time to talk about it. But I, I, in general, I think novice and intermediate level HPDE drivers are not geared up to like accept a bunch of my very, like very detailed criticism, detailed, timely, you know, in, in time with, uh, with what's happening on track criticism about, about their shifting. You know, you can kind of talk concepts and, and sort of say, Hey, let's maybe try this next time around. But I, I, I don't do it like, uh, you know, as it's happening, unless, unless I can, like I said, unless I can tell a student just like really on the ball with everything I'm saying and, and they want it, you know what I mean? Also, you know, some people just don't want to hear it. They, they're like, I got the shift down. Like, well, you think you do, but I'm going to, we'll get to that later. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I just let that go. As long as, as long as they're keeping the car moving, you know, and, and nothing crazy is happening with the shift, I might just let that go and really, really concentrate on throttle or braking. Let's get back to throttle. The biggest shock for people is usually how early I want them to make the turn and how quickly they can get back on the throttle. <laughs> that's what's usually that breaks their brain. Like what? You know, and you just got, and then that's when I turn into cheerleader mode. I'm like, get it. Let's go. Let's go. Full power. Full, my, my, I think my most frequent thing I say in the car is, is full power, full power, full power. <laughs> I like flat, flat spot. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah. And I'm like, give the gas, 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 gas. Let's go. That's that's what I'm usually doing in the car. Everything else is just keeping me and the other person alive. But mostly, the fun part for me is just like, let's go. You can get it now. They're like, what? I'm like, yes, get it now. <laughs> you know, that's that's the fun of instructing is when people get faster and you get to open the doors to how much they they and their car can do. So that's I don't know. I, I know I went off my tangent, but uh, okay. that that's what I'm doing in the car with somebody. <laughs> so, Miss Vicky, does that sound like yes. something you can do? Yes, and, and I, I'm I'm thinking back on when you and I were in the car and the instructing, and I'm just kind of s- spinning off of what Ben's talking about. I think that you and I, when we're there's lots of issues in the car when we're well, no, no, I think that you are a rapid fire person. Mm-hmm. When I'm more of a processing person, mm-hmm. so I think for information. It's it's good to figure out if your student, like he said, is a processor. So you could say, how how would you like your information to be received in the moment, or do you want it leading up to? So, and if they don't know, you kind of figure figure it out. And I think that in the moment is not good for me. So I agree, it's not good for you. I've also been trained to do it way ahead of time. There's more to it between you and I than just the time of it. So this this is true. (laughs) (laughs) So you're you're telling me to do what I was doing. So that's fine. But it's okay. We're good. We have other people who can teach you, like Ben Dawson. Ben Dawson. Yeah. Can't wait to get Ben Dawson in the car. That's right. Yeah. I uh, I not to not to toot my own trombone, but I have definitely made people a lot faster and. I see people, people, video of people who I've, who I've instructed before I see their driving stuff. I'm like, Ooh, it's like, I see, I see some of my bad habits show up in people's driving like in their videos. Like, Oh shit, I infected another one. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of funny to see like the, I, I, it's really weird to have been doing this long enough to actually see your own approach borne out by other people. I'm like, Oh, okay. I hope that's right. <laughs> you know what? That would be really, really fun. It's just like, if you're, if you're being coached, I should send them my very first video. I say, no. you know what? I just can't seem to get any faster. Well, you know, send me a video. Let me see what you're doing. And send my first video that went out when I'm sitting driving like I'm going to church. They won't go <laughs> out. see what they say. They won't what? go out Okay, with you. well, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll send you a real one. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? That would be good. Mm-hmm. It could be. So do we coast or no? Do we ever answer that? N- oh. We're not. So, I'm a coaster, but um, I, I – I'm trying to break the habit. Don't coast. I, you know, and, and on the other side of that coin, I am probably a no coasting extremist. What do you think, Bill? I think you should minimize it. Yeah. You should 
if you're going to do it, you need to have a reason that you're doing it. And the reason I just can't find, I can't find any reasons to ever be doing it. Well, the, the one that I always bring up is if I'm on a long constant radius carousel type turn, but you're either losing speed or you're gaining speed on the way out, right? There's always a little bit of give and take. You're either right. But, but sometimes, excel. sometimes you're you're you may not be on the brake or just or the throttle. You may just be going through with the turn. I'm t- not talking mm. for a long period of time. I'm talking, you know, fractions yeah. of a second. But it, it's maybe possible. maybe yeah maybe fractions of a second in transition and but, and, and there but there not absolute zero. Where, Right, and there and there are definitely times where I might use a little bit longer dwell time between mm-hmm. third and fourth. You know what I mean? I'm, I just mm-hmm. I may not rip I may not rip the three four shift as fast as I could. It's right. a, it's even it might be a little mini version of CPR, but but you mm-hmm. know I might I might do a slow shift and so let everything settle and then go. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's my version of coasting. But I don't think you should ever just be off brakes and and throttle and just rolling. To me. You and the race car need to be either accelerating or decelerating, and there shouldn't be there shouldn't be much dwell time or downtime in between. Like you got to be the transitions are always coming or going. And, so and I mean, I, I think that I think the hang up some people get is you're either on the brake or you're on the gas to the floor, and and this is, right. this no, is no, that no, was no, the no. confusing part for me. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you're driving a Miata, yes, that's what it is. If you're driving that little Honda you people have, yes, that's probably what it is. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. the throttle is like a switch. I mean, yeah, you may need to finesse the throttle in a car in a car that's got more than, let's say, 180 horsepower. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Two to three hundred, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're if you're if you're north of if you're, if you're north of like 175, you might have to start depending on how much the car weighs. If you got a really mm-hmm. light car that, that's got that kind of power, you might have to finesse the throttle. But I mean, for the most part, most of the crap that we're out there driving. Is is the throttle pedal is like a switch, like E46. You know, if it's got a good engine, you probably may have to modulate the throttle on the way out a little bit. But I mean, for me, driving that Miata for years and years, it was just bam, bam, bam. The throttle is a switch. I'm on it or I'm off. Because I mean, if you feather the throttle in a Miata, there's, there's no point. Because it's not like it hits hard or you got a big throttle response. You know, it's not like it's going to upset the car. So just depending on what you're driving. Um, but I, you know, I, I also I grasp that that what part of what comes with never coasting is potentially upsetting the car, right? Yes. I'm coming or I'm going and I'm prepared to adapt and adjust to the upset of the car dealing with my fairly um, persistent inputs. You know, if I'm, if I'm always on mm-hmm. the gas or the, or, or the brake, you yes. always make it an input and you're always asking a lot from the car. And there are some people whose style is to ask for more than they know the car can give them and sort it out on the way out. Yep. I definitely do that. Yep. And there are some folks who just find the pra- a comfortable parameter to ride around in and, and some of that might involve a little bit of coasting and letting things get to where you want it. But I'm not that kind of comfortable driver. Like I would much rather have the car be slightly upset and mad at me and fighting on the way out. You know, it, it, even so, if that means I can keep around the throttle position I've already set on the way out of the corner, you know, or if I can break a very minimal amount in, even if I know, even if I know the car's going to be a little bit upset, you know, trying to work down at the apex, but I want to, I want to minimize my braking time. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I think that the, uh the no coast driving style is pretty demanding it, it is, takes a it is. fairly high, it takes a fairly high skill level so i always set that huge expectation for drivers when i'm in the car with them especially if i get to be in the car with somebody in a de i will say here is the lofty goal for where we want to be so this is our ideal we want to work toward not the end of the world if we don't do it but this is the thing we always want to be idealizing and striving towards so i don't, I don't ever set the expectation like there's no coasting in, in the car if i'm in the car you know like i'm never trying to scare the crap out of anybody but i always just try to set the 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 eventual expectation that once you get good at this and have a bunch of seat time under your belt, you ought to be able to just go smoothly from braking right back into throttle, back into braking. It's always a pretty even flow to quote Pearl Jam, but you know you're never really just kind of hanging around. Miss mm-hmm. Vicky, you never you stay. Have... You never standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. You know what I'm saying? On, on the <laughs> way to Tacoma. That's right. Miss <laughs> Vicky, you wanted to talk about the all the way down comment, all the way on the gas, all the way on the brake. Yeah, see when I when they were when I was learning early on and I kept hearing foot to the floor, foot to the floor, just mm-hmm. foot to the floor all the time. So yeah. it it in my thinking, how do I do that and get the max? Am I just am I well, 
you because got instructor like telling you, you that, right? You have to then? lift. You feel like you have to, or you have to lower your gear and do higher revs and foot to the floor. And so I kept trying to do that, which I felt yep. like. But you had an instructor saying, "Go, it's time to go!" Right? You had an instructor saying, "Foot to yeah, the floor." Is this but, just, but I, is this I, just I panic? It, is this panic? People are the person that's in the car with you saying that. I think it's just uh, talking in general to people. Okay, yeah, and, and loose, instructing. Loose talking and, the, Loose talk in the paddock is one thing versus having an actual experienced butt in the car with you who's like, hey, yeah, Vicky, you can nail it here. It's fine. You're, you're going to be fine. That, that, that's kind of two different things. Like misinformation in the paddock is real and people will just say whatever. I don't, don't listen to anybody talking to you in the pits about what they're doing on the track because their car may be different. There's plenty of reasons not to listen to anything anybody tells you in the pits. But I feel like it's safe to, it's safe to hear an instructor who's in the car with you go, hey, you can mat it right here. You can go flat through here and, and, and listen to them and trust them. Because they're 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 underballing you all the time. Just <laughs> believe really? me when I tell you yes. your instructor is way underballing you. So they're, we're we're working you up, and, and we're we're if if it's a, I, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to say I'm the best instructor in the world, but I think if it's a fairly competent, capable instructor who's got a good safety mindset, they're assessing what you and your car can do. They've already got a good idea of what your car is, what modifications you've done to it, and what that's going to enable. Um, and, and I think. I think it's completely valid to trust an instructor who's saying, yeah, Vicky, go ahead and hit it right here. You're good. Mm -hmm. Versus somebody who's like in the, in the pits, you know, on their eighth beer, at, you know, at the barbecue that's like, oh, hell yeah, take that turn flat out. Like, whoa, hold on, big guy. You know what I mean? There's just, that's a couple of different, vastly different genres of track advice. I just want to be clear. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah I, maybe that was some of my hang up. So yeah. one thing you can think about and, and and maybe this this may be the end of the conversation. I don't know. But think about it this way. If the car is essentially going straight or close to straight, there's almost no excuse in the cars that we have not to have your foot flat on the floor on the gas yeah. pedal. Uh -huh. And then that's, that's, at, that's true. as you get better, you keep bringing that earlier and earlier into the turn. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where you're really going to make your your changes now the one bad habit you have is you don't stay flat to the floor uh -uh. until the break zone so you're losing a chunk of time at the end you're actually better at the beginning than you are at the end and, and usually it's the exact opposite so when you do yeah, get this switch you will be so much faster you'll probably be what? faster than me yeah, that's a, that's a great point about having the wheel straight. That's something that I, I didn't think about earlier. But when I'm talking about cheerleading and being in the car with with uh, students and saying, you know, okay, you can go ahead and get it. Once I've kind of got them coded into where they can start hitting the gas, then that's when I also will start bringing in open your wheel, get that wheel open, because that once they understand how to, having the wheels straight and the, having the wheel open and the wheels pointed where it needs to go, how they once they sort of understand how that equates to getting their getting having their throttle fully down. Pretty much all I gotta start saying is, all right, let's get that wheel open. They know that's code for let's get going. Let's get, the, you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. so it, I kind of have to work up to to start to talk to to students about getting the wheel open. But once I've kind of got the mechanics of when they get on the throttle, that's when I all I have to say to them is just let's get that wheel open. They're like Pavlov's dog, you know. <laughs> it's like let's go. And then, so that's a, a it's not necessarily high concept. It's kind of mid concept. But I, I think mm -hmm. when you can kind of focus on the goal, the goal of getting out of the corners. I just want to get my wheel straight. That's predicated by me already being pretty much full full on the throttle as I'm getting the wheels straightened out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the earlier you get onto the gas pedal and stay there, mm -hmm. the faster you'll be. The As you get earlier and earlier, it may require a little more adjustment, a little more skill to not have the car get upset or not have the car start to, you know, the, one of the fun things is when you actually get it just a little early and you have to do a little bit of adjust to, to get it because you 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 just missed it a little bit but then the next time around you know exactly what you did and you do a little bit less right so but you stay with that you stay with that throttle you've already picked up like to yeah. me there's <laughs> there's no bigger dishonor or lap to me than having to come back out of the throttle on an exit like if it, i know i've said this before it, it sounds kind of highfalutin but like to me if i'm coming out of a corner and i got a stutter step or do a pedal fest coming you know like, up, 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 off, off the throttle that lap is gone for me. I'm like, shit, well, this, thing, this lap is done. You know, oh, I'm not going to give up. I'm still going to drive the rest of the lap. But, but as, as soon as I got even like a little mistake where I've got a pedal coming out of the corner, I'm like, oh, this lap, this was done. You know, I'm not that worried about the rest of the lap. But, uh, you know, that, that's, but I mean, I, I, 
uh, you know, I drive at a, at a, at a fairly at well-tuned level. You know what I mean? I'm pretty tuned up to my butt dyno. And if I've screwed it up bad enough where I have to lift around the corner, I'm like, I was, already, I was already pretty screwed anyway. If I've, got to, if I've messed it up bad enough to, come, to have to lift coming out of the corner. So anyway, that's just, that's just my, my kind of snotty sounding two cents about it. <laughs> and if we were to look at your data or look at you when we were driving with you, Miss Vicky, mm-hmm. the number of turns where your rear end gets loose on the exit is very mm-hmm. few. Very few. That's a good thing. No. No? No. Okay. I'd, rather be, I'd rather be fighting a little bit loose on the way out. Like a little bit. I mean, a lot is fun and hilarious, but it's not fast. But I would rather be slightly always oversteering coming in or out if i had a choice but yeah definitely on the way out i want to be oversteering a little bit you're, you're a little more comfortable with your rear end getting a little loose on entry than you are on exit you you don't like it on exit and that's something you're going to need to get to i, I can get to that i know you can yeah it's just if yeah, you let, don't uh, try let, let ben you, ride in there we'll, we'll get it going yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, due, I promise you that you will instructor. You will stay on the gas with Ben in the car much more than you did with me in the car. I, I've never, I've never really had anybody time it, but I will definitely add take away seconds off your laps for sure. Hundred percent. At least, at least while I'm in the car. The, the big trick is people making it actually work when I'm not in the car. That's the thing I find <laughs> people are trying to have the trouble with. Like, how do I do this when you're not here? Well, pay attention. <laughs> and Ben, you know what I wish for you? What's that? I wish for you not to get the the wonderful gift that my beautiful bride gave me when I was instructing her. Oh. Which was when I said what we needed to do, and she said no. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got a, I got two kids. I hear it all the time. <laughs> yes, I'm like I was trying to get through the braking of the at the end of the straightaway, and I was like, okay, we're going to start at the four because the the brake zone's at the two and a half. <laughs> We're going to start at the floor. We're going to hit the brake as hard as we can. And each lap, if we if we see that we can do better, we're going to move up like half a board each time. And, you know, we'll eventually figure it out. And she's like, no. No. Like, no. Okay. Uh-uh. No, I, I did at one point just tell him to stop talking. <laughs> I, need you just, to, I need you to stop talking to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, basically funny. told him that. So you're talking too much. Yes. <laughs> Yep. I gotta say, it's about it's kind of a shame how many times a day I say something like that to people at work, like "Stop talking to me." <laughs> just, just stop talking, please. Stop yep. talking to me right now. I've got other stuff to do. <laughs> I never say that, but I say that in my head like a hundred times a day at work. Stop talking, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Your lips are moving, but my ears aren't hearing anything. I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, Mr. Don't Dawson, um, I have a feeling we might return to the coasting topic since I think we talked everything about everything except well, coasting. A little bit of know, coasting. You know, I, th- I, think, I think we did touch on some detail if people are willing to, to wade through the cat butt, but I would definitely be happy to come back. And, and I'll, be, I'll be happy to come back and proselytize about no, you're either, you're either gassing or breaking anytime you want to do that because I'm always happy to beat that drum. Because okay. I want I want better I want better drivers around me when I'm out there competing. Mm-hmm. So I want people who also beat that same drum and maybe beat me into the corner. That's great. That would be something for you to shoot for because you're in training yeah. too. That's right. Always in training. Always yes. learning. Always. Yeah. Thank you, Mister Austin. Thanks for continuing to have me. It's always <laughs> but I'm why y'all do that. But I'm glad to be here. You always look surprised when I keep sending you a text saying, "Hey, we need some more." Yo, again? Okay, cool. <laughs> they, they didn't ditch me yet. They're still doing episodes, I guess. I guess. We'll keep going. We got a long way to go. Ross is coming soon. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we're working our way back around to a Ross episode. Ross mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. A Ross episode. A Ross episode. Those, those are great milestones. I love it. The Ross Assance. The Ross Assance is upon us. <laughs> <laughs> the Ross Apocalypse has arrived. <laughs> I'm sure he's scared right now. In front of everything. <laughs> All right, we did I thought, it. I thought we were on a break. Anyway, wrong Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I never watched. I never watched one single episode of that show. Not a one. I can't say that. Can't say I that won. at all. I feel like I won life by that. Okay, very well. Goodbye, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I've also never ever had coffee one time. 
I'm with you. One sip. One sip in high school. I was like, this is disgusting. I didn't even swallow. I think I spit it back out. You know what I, you know, as far as I've gone in the coffee genre. Smelling it and being like, this is gross. Ice cream. If you can't make, Uh if you can't make something coffee, ice cream doesn't taste good. I'm not going for the real thing. I'm sorry, guys, but coffee ice cream is a summer treat in the afternoon just for a pick me up. Oh, it's so good. Oh, so good. It's awesome. Uh, I would I would rather I would rather check out what your cat's butt tastes like. <laughs> I will show you the pucker. I'll bring her <laughs> back and show you the pucker if you don't stop. I just want to I just want to say she's a real star. And, and, <laughs> and once again, our audience is so thrilled that this is not a video podcast. Anyway. <laughs> and Vicky Vicky oh, gives so me junk. Funny. She gives me junk. Like, why don't we do video podcasts? I'm like, do you see what we talk about? Anyway. Yeah, it would be awesome. Do you see us? Do you see the way we look as people? I mean, no. Exactly. I'm not great. It would be awesome. (laughs) Very well. All right. Very well. Until until the next episode (laughs) where I ask a question and we talk about everything else. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. See (laughs) y'all. Bye. Well, that one, that one's one that's going to make the record. <laughs> you, you got me with that cat, but I was just like, whoa! Put that thing away! <laughs> Obviously, you don't have animals at the moment. <laughs> oh, no, we I got two dogs. They just kind of, their their butts are just not usually like walking around. <laughs> <their face. laughs> it's so funny. And, like, I thought you were going to ask her to wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hate I to say it, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad my wife is allergic to cats, so we don't have to have one. I'm just not a cat person at all. I'm not sure that came across. But I'm not a cat it was it was subtle. I think somebody might have pieced it's it together. Subtle, <laughs> subtle. Yeah, so subtle, guys. You're like, whoa. I think I, th- I think once she got into the toothbrushes, it might have might have peeked through oh. once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I have opinions. I got opinions about what cats do with their butts. That's right. There's no coasting and no toothbrushes. Anyway, <laughs> but the the one the one I'll tell you one cat story and then roll. But when I was so my parents had a cat. I guess they had recently gotten married. It was one of the first times they had people over. So my mom had made a pumpkin pie and set it out on the counter, and then came back in to serve it when it was time. And there was a cat tongue gouge right out the middle of it. No, no. So my mom just reached in there and got the whipped cream and slapped that shit on there. And <laughs> <took it> on. <laughs> well, you know what, Ben? For your mom, I'm going to edit that out for you. <laughs> oh, shit. Are we still talking? <laughs> and everybody's you wondering, never... I had pumpkin pie at her place. Right. Was that <laughs> us? Okay. This one had there's extra a, whipped cream. Good, there's a very good chance everybody who was in the room eating that pie is... 75% of them are probably dead. So you can tell that story. Don't edit that. Mm-hmm. Don't cut it. <laughs> they're not listening to this podcast. <laughs> probably not. Oh, man. Much like the other 8 billion people in the world. We'll get them all. <laughs> That's right. I'm always, I truly am always shocked by how many people are actually listening to this. Like, I love it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not shocked. I'm not saying that because we're not doing a good job or it's terrible. Oh, I understand. I just, I'm, my imposter syndrome is just so prevalent that I'm always like, surprised. We have, we have listeners? We do. Right, exactly. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me so, get the latest.